Now, this week, the government confirmed that thousands of victims of the infected blood scandal will receive interim compensation payments of £100,000 each. That's in line with a recommendation made last month by the chairman of the public inquiry into the supply by the NHS of contaminated blood products to patients in the 1970s and 80s. One of those who died after receiving contaminated blood products was John Cowan from Carlisle. He was a haemophiliac who was just 36 when he died of AIDS. His daughter, Nina Douglas, says the payment represents an acknowledgement that the state made wholesale mistakes that cost many people their lives. When my father was infected, they knew that that there could be repercussions like this. Um, But they just kept on, you know, dishing out this factor eight, what was classed as a medicine, Um, that was actually killing people. And maybe they didn't know for definite, but they had an inclination, you know, that they should have stopped using it, you know, straight away, which which is part of the problem that we have here, really. You know, if they'd acknowledged, you know, this medicine isn't quite correct. It was, you know, nobody's fault. You know, this medicine isn't quite doing what it should. We've got a problem with this. Stop using it. You know, it's not the mistake that's the problem here. It's how the mistake was dealt with afterwards. Mm. You know, instead of doing that, they decided, let's delete people's medical records. Let's, you know, remove some of these files. Uh, uh, And I'm saying some... A lot of people who I speak to, my father included, have had, my mother even, have had medical records deleted to to hide the fact that somebody made a mistake. You know, I think they went down the wrong route straight away. And the fact that Jeremy Hunt said to the infected blood inquiry um, that, yeah, institutions and the state do often close ranks around a lie, um, that that just said it for me we've known that for years <laughs> it's it's been horrendous it really has nina um your long campaign for a public inquiry i mean how vindicated do you feel by the findings of that inquiry so far um yeah i suppose it's good but um on the other hand there's so many people coming forward now to this day saying I'm part of you, I've got the same narrative as you, but I've been petrified to come forward. You know, there's still people to this day, there was in total between HIV and um, the hepatitis, there was about 4,000 people in total uh, that were infected. Um, I can speak about the HIV that, you know, um, progressing to AIDS with my father, but I think to this date there's about 297 of the original 1,400 still alive. Obviously no amount of money, as you say, is going to bring your dad back, but does it go any way to to bring some sort of closure or, or comfort to you, Nina? Um, it, it doesn't actually. What it actually does for me is it tells me that, yes, the state are now saying they are to blame. Um, this is an interim payment, an interim to what? You know, that's what they're not, you know, it's an interim to, you know, is there anything further down the line? Um, you know, we're still being kept very much in the dark. You know, we only hear about all these different updates by the news. You know, quite a lot of people only hear about this situation on the media. You know, we're still being kept very in the dark ourselves, t- to be honest. But no amount of money. I What I need to know is, especially with myself and my father's records, my mother's records, who decided, that's what I want to know, who decided to rifle through all these people's medical records and delete as appropriate that that is what i need to know that is nina douglas from carlisle whose father john cowan died from aids in 1991 after receiving contaminated blood products